that's us rested and supplied. We've reprovisioned, so we're just going to top up the fuel and water tanks are full. Um, we've also replaced our gas, so we're good to keep oh. going and trucking south. Nice one. So we're just about to leave Peterhead Harbour. I'm going to restart the engine before making way just to check that the cooling system's working properly. We had a wee bit of a hiccup coming in to the main entrance to the harbour here, the big commercial harbour. There was no water coming through the cooling system, and so the engine sounded like a boy racer car. Rrr. Probably the, 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 the intake, the raw water intake pipe that goes to the sea was probably just blocked with something because after opening it up and playing around with it a wee bit it started pulling water again. So otherwise um, we've got about 150 to 200 miles to the south of Scotland and hopefully some westerlies to push us all the way down there. So let's go. Thanks for that. Uh, we'll be bound for Amble Marina. All things doing well, over. Pretty sure this thing is sucking away all our wind quite frustratingly, and the tide's just turned against us for about, well, up to about an, a knot or 0 0.8 knots against us. So we're bobbing about like a cork, doing 2.8 to 3 knots. Could be worse though. At least it's not raining. Here it comes. Wow. It's not quite a tropical tropical squall, but the wind has increased to like 14, 15 knots, which is perfect for us. Well, it's picking up now. And we're doing five knots again. We're getting a good soaking, but the sails needed a wash anyway. So, win-win. That's insane. <laughs> kind of happy wasn't doing my shifts when I was helming. Yeah, it is pretty crazy out there. I wonder how long it's gonna last. We do so there is a lot of water coming out the stack pack, so all the rain arrive on the sail and then put it in the stack pack and then there's like a waterfall. So we're chatting about how to um, get fresh water while it's like uh, raining so I think we discovered our water source so now we're gonna have to think on like what to attach at the end of the stack pack and how to like collect that because it would be perfect uh, but for now just observing and just like that all the wind's gone we were going so well going with it as well so we've now got <coughs> Yeah, about six knots across the beam, so pretty slow for our big boat. So Selene's rigging up the spinnaker. It's a much more efficient sail, and we'll try and run with it for a bit. And still, uh, still gain south on our bearing, because at the moment we're headed for Aberdeen.
southward leg. We've traversed the majority of the leg for Scotland from Peterhead down past Edinburgh, the Firth of Forth. And we're now approaching the English border. The sun has just broken after what was a completely windless afternoon and night. So we were powered under the engine, which we're very thankful for. In the lows, rather. We even had a visit from a minky whale last night. Well, this morning, three o'clock, something like that. Big whale came up alongside the boat for a, a breath. That was pretty cool. And we're now on the wind, about 15, 15 knots coming from the land. Mally's got a single reef in the main and a double reef in the Genoa and we're making five and a half to six knots straight for our destination. Really good, really good sailing. There's no swell here either, we're in a big estuary basically that feeds out of the fourth from Scotland. So there's no swell, just a bit of wind chop, it's quite good fun. And just like that, we are in England after 160 miles at sea in less than 30 hours, so about 20, 28 and a half hours or something, that's not bad going. On approach to Blythe Harbour, Blythe Marina, under engine, beautiful sunny day, but a spicy day of sailing up to like 20 knots, averaging like five and a half knots of boat speed. All is well on board the good ship Mali. See what England looks like. Just going to jump in here through the power of video editing in the future and from a much sunnier anchorage has to be said. Ultimately we did think we had remedied the water pump issue that we were experiencing uh, in the north of Scotland but it was in fact the beginning of a saga so when we were starting the engine uh, the raw water pump was not pooling uh, there was no pressure so there was no water coming into the engine still and it took a bit of tweaking to re-establish that pressure uh, which is what we're discovering after arriving in England. Uh, more on that as it develops, but otherwise, a uh, huge thanks to everybody who's liking, commenting and subscribing. Gives us a massive boost, uh, lots of encouragement, and it's really nice to hear comments from all around the world. It's really cool to sort of virtually meet people in New Zealand, um, from Asia, from the States, and it's wicked. Uh, if you happen to feel like supporting the channel financially, you can jump to the little link below, buy me a coffee and just a couple of quid will really support the production of these videos, uh, mostly just covering the, uh, the cost of the programs that we use to edit it. Otherwise, uh, yeah, thanks again and we'll join Mally back in sunny England. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha.
can't see, but there is a wee bit of blade stuck in the outlet of the pump, which is on its way to the rest of the engine. So a yeah. worthy exercise. Well, look at my strobe light. <laughs> yes, when you're supposed to check, we should have checked in beta heads yeah. rather than run the engine again, but learning. Hmm. <laughs> well, we got a new, new gasket and some fresh grease and more importantly, a new impeller in. Uh, the old one took a bit of getting out, a bit of swearing, but persevered and it finally came out. It's mostly in bits. This is what the old one looks like. Had to remove most of the fins to get any sort of purchase. And that's what a new one looks like. We don't have an impeller remover tool. However, Selene had the idea to use these. <sighs> Something like that. It's just gave enough flat purchase to slot it out. So we're going to fire up the engine and see if she's pulling the motor okay, hopefully. Well, that's the engine now uh, without any oil. We've drained out a good two and a half, maybe three litres. Um, and just before refilling with fresh, nice, clean oil, I like to um, flush through the, the whole crankcase and, and head with um, a bit of oil. Normally we've got um, a bit left from the previous bottle because we never use, it, use them all. These are like four litres or something four or five litres, we never use all that. And there's always that bit just slopping about the bottom. So before refilling with a fresh batch, I'll use the end of that just to flush through the entire uh, engine and drain that off and hopefully remove any sooty particles and just give it a wee clean before uh, the fresh oil goes in. Nice and simple. Day four of our southern descent across the UK. We're on a passage from Lowestoft to Ramsgate, just north of Dover. We've got 20 knots of wind from the west, southwest, so we're we're hard on the wind, about 60 degrees, with uh, two knots of tide behind us. So we're averaging seven knots, which is nuts. So, so fast uh, and wet. We have a wet deck, I've got a wet hat. Decks are getting a good wash. And we've got, what, 80, it's an 80 mile passage. The tide will turn about halfway through, so we're trying to make as best speed as we can whilst we've got the tide with us. The sea's quite confused because the wind is over tide at the moment. So it's steep and choppy. 
And shallow. And shallow. There's only 20, 30 meters of water here. It's like 10 miles offshore. But it's good fun, good sailing. Who's that behind you? A massive ferry or cruise ship, I'm not sure. Something, something, Britannica. I thought they were coming for us at some point. <laughs> we have no treasure on board, please. Oh, they've started beeping on the AIS now. Okay. And they stopped. I mean, they did like, I don't know if they're doing the detour, if it's their route or they're just doing the detour for us. Thank you if you are. But yeah, if they are, thank you. Because it was scary. <laughs> I'm so warm. It's crazy, my brain is roasting. We're still beating 60 degrees into the wind with. Um, 18 knots apparent, but going up to 20, 22 knots apparent. Um, and we're going super fast, we're going with the tide still at the moment. Uh, we left lowest toft with the tide and we are gonna have the tide with us until 12. So still good two hours, I think, to go with the tide. So going eight knots has been a good hour. We've been doing like eight knots most of the time. So flying, and then soon we're gonna arrive um, at the TSS of the Sunk, I think that's the name of it, uh, just in front of the Tam Estuary. Um, so yeah, that's gonna be interesting with loads, loads of traffic, and yeah, just there, there's even a roundabout in there, so that's gonna be a bit funny. And then I think with those speeds, we might be south of it before the turn, the tide turn, so that would be good. And then we might have uh, five hours of kind of slow going, so we'll see when we are against the tide, and then hopefully that will then be us arriving with the beginning of the tide going south in Ramsgate. So, yes! Back to summer sailing, sun is out. And we're what? We're against the tide now? Yeah. Tide has turned. But we're still making four, four knots. Single reef in the main and a single, well, a double reef in the Genoa. Hard on the wind. But we made so much time this morning that you can't be bitter about it. No, it can't be bitter about it. Well, what goes up must come down. Lost the wind entirely. Even though it sounds like fresh wind, uh, we're now motoring along the last few miles to our destination, Ramsgate, just north of Dover on the south coast of the UK. Anyway, we'll see what see what Ramsgate's like. Let the worst of the weather, 25 knot below, pass through tomorrow and make our way to a launching point for France. Summer sailing in the UK.